So this town that I live in, Tarpon Springs, I haven't talked about it a whole lot. So I'm gonna do a few videos talking about it, but let's start just to clarify why Tarpon Springs might not be right for you. I'm Sam and thanks for coming by the Living in Tampa channel where we make videos about what it's like to live in the whole Tampa area. If that's something you wanna follow along with, don't forget to subscribe. Also, we are a team of realtors here in the area, so if you have any real estate specific needs, don't hesitate to reach out. You know, I think the main reason I haven't talked much about Tarpon Springs, specifically other than just saying that that's where I live, is because it is where I live. It feels a little close to home to talk about or to criticize or those kind of things. And also we, we mostly live in Tarpon Springs because we have family here. I don't think you're going to live in Tarpon Springs because I have family here. So my reasons for living here would be very different for yours. But I had some clients in town recently, Brian and Lacey moving from the Nashville area. And in visiting these areas, they really loved Tarpon Springs. And it was interesting for me to hear some of the reasons why. The charming quirkiness of it and all of the water were the big reasons they loved it. Those big reasons that other people are, are sometimes critical of. Let's get into those reasons and you know why Tarpon Springs may or may not be for you. First of all, Tarpon Springs is very Greek. And when I say Tarpon Springs is really Greek, I mean like really Greek, like you'll hear people speaking Greek like at the park and you know at first this felt like really fun and like diverse to me. Felt like oh this is like kind of unique and feels a little bit like Europe. I actually have traveled a lot and some parts of this town really do feel like little parts of Greece. After being here for a while actually what I realized is it's really not diverse. It's actually really Greek and even most of the Greeks are from the Dodecanese islands. A lot of them are from these little collection of islands. So you move from a place that isn't filled with Greek people and you move here and it feels like oh this is really unique and diverse but after being here for a while it's not that diverse. Okay, another thing that you could either love or hate about this area is the water. And you know, maybe you're moving to Florida to be close to the water, but maybe Tarpon Springs is too close. So this is like the middle of town. This is like a city park behind the camera. And this is like one of the bayous in the middle of town. So this is Whitcomb Bayou, this is Spring Bayou over here. There's this big collection of brackish water in the middle of town. There's a river that runs all the way through like the old sponge docks area where there's, they still do bring in fresh sponges every day. That's the Anklote River, and as the Anklote River mixes with the Gulf of Mexico, it forms these bayous. And in Spring Bayou, there's actually a spring that comes out. So some people have docks, there's houses along some of these bayous, and some people have docks that can access the Gulf really easily. People don't swim in here, people fish a little bit in here. This time of year, so it's winter right now, manatees will come up into here and go all the way over to the spring at Spring Bayou. And then there's this big thing in the bayous every year called Epiphany, which is a big Greek Orthodox celebration. And it's dramatic. We're gonna make a video about that too. The, the priest throws this big cross into the bayou and the Greek boys dive in and, and try to get it. I'll share more about kind of the history, the meaning behind all of that in that video. So let's talk about the things you could love about all this water. There's 25 to 30 miles of waterfront in Tarpon. So accessing the water is really easy. There's a boat ramp right here in the middle of town. There's a boat ramp out at Sunset Beach. There's other boat ramps here. Dropping your boat in the water could be really easy. Living on the water has some potential here, whether that's a house, a condo, things like that, you know, where you have your own kind of dock situation, even a little townhouse. There's a lot of opportunities like that. And since it is kind of far from Tampa, it's a little bit cheaper to live on the water. Another cool water thing is these bayous. They're really unique. There's like a boat parade every Christmas. There's parts of these bayous where you can like go tubing and those kind of things. And this kind of like local water access, they used to call this like the Venice of the South or the Venice of Florida. These kind of from the sky, these bayous are really cool. I like just being able to drive around town and see water like in the middle of town to see all this water, I think is really unique and charming. The Anklote River and this like sponge docks experience up on the north side of town is really fun too. I mean, it feels kind of kitschy and touristy at times, but it's like active sponge docks. Like they're actually fishing for sponges and bringing them in, trimming them, selling them. And then people like have bakeries down there. There's good, good Greek food down there. There's fish markets. 
People like have their livelihood down there. So it's not just a touristy thing. It's a real functioning, sponging, shrimping, fishing area that supports a lot of jobs here in the Tarpon area. There's also a few beaches here in Tarpon Springs. So there's Fred Howard Park, which is a county park. So my father-in-law's uncle was actually Fred Howard. Um, if you ever meet him, he'll likely tell you that. It's a really cool beach. That, so the, there's like a causeway that goes out into the Gulf. So the, the beach is out into the Gulf a little bit. And then further out, you can see some other like beach islands that there's little boat cruises you can take out to those. And then there's Sunset Beach, which is a city park. Sunset Beach, a lot of people go out there to watch the sunset, actually because it doesn't close as early as Fred Howard Park. And because it's a city park, they're just a little looser about those kind of things. For a long time, there's been like monthly concerts at Sunset Beach and all kinds of local things like that. And, and both of those beaches, I mean, neither of them are like pristine, but they're pretty nice. There's also a lot of boat storage, boat repair, boat sales in this area. You know, a lot of people that live in Tampa store their boats here in Tarpon because the marinas here are more affordable and it's really easy to get out into the Gulf from here. Okay, and one of the other things to love about the water here is actually a big lake on the east side of town, Lake Tarpon, a giant, giant lake. It's huge. It's like a, this really huge lake. Yeah, there's alligators in lakes in Florida. Along kind of all the edges, there's some alligators. People still like swim and ski and all that kind of stuff. Alligators aren't like trying to attack people. I kind of like to tell people it's kind of like mountain lions. You hope you never really see one and you probably won't and it will mostly just avoid you. Alligators, you're gonna see them quite a bit more but they're like pretty scared of you. If you do see people feeding alligators, just remind them that when you feed alligators, that is when they're more likely to attack or there's more likely to be some kind of accident because then they're approaching humans expecting some kind of food. Okay, some of the downsides about all of this water. Tarpon was built a long time ago when they did not think much about flooding. So my house is built in 1962. It's actually just a few blocks from here down by these bayous. My yard's about three feet above sea level. My living room's about five feet above sea level. Really to be safe from flooding, you need to be like 15 feet above sea level. My neighborhood has flooded a few times in the past 60 years since the house has been built, but my house has actually never flooded and kind of quirky reasons around that. But the whole area is more flood prone because it's lower, because we have all of this water and high and low tides really affect this water because it's connected to the Gulf. So a high spring tide, these roads around the bayous are pretty wet. And sometimes you got you need to avoid them because you don't really wanna drive through that salt water. You definitely can avoid flood zones in Tarpon Springs, but it's kind of tricky. Also, we, we do have hurricanes here, obviously. So we've lived in our house for three hurricane seasons. And every single year we've had a named hurricane and needed to like take shelter. Well, we took shelter this last one, Ian. And then it didn't actually come our way. And then the year before we didn't take shelter, but we lost power for like 24 hours. So we ended up staying with some family, but that's just a factor in this area. The other thing that I think you would either love or hate about Tarpon Springs is actually its location. And location is often the biggest factor in real estate. Tarpon Springs is about 50 minutes from downtown Tampa, about 50 minutes from downtown St. Petersburg. That might feel really doable to you. That might feel really easy, you know, still could be like a, an, an outing, but that might feel a little further than you want. You know, the airport in Tampa is kind of, is very central to the Tampa area. So it's about a 30, 35 minute drive. If it's early in the morning, you could get there even faster. So the airport's a, a still a pretty convenient location, but if you're commuting into Tampa or into St. Pete, it might feel a little far, but maybe, maybe you wanna feel a little far from those areas. Then this could be a really good option. I mean, it's a normal town. You don't need shopping. You mostly need necessities. These towns have all of that stuff. You either like that distance or you don't. I kind of like it. Whenever I'm going out to do showings with clients, sometimes I do have to drive an hour to the first showing out in Wesley Chapel or down in downtown St. Pete. Like, that's okay for me. I have accepted that. And that's kind of up for you to decide whether or not you like that or hate it. If you have any questions about the area, please don't hesitate to reach out. We'd love to hop on a call and see how we can help you. Thanks for coming by.